Hello plant friends, my name is Victoria and you're watching Plantastics. I figured today that I would do a care video on the Darth Vaderina Green Spot Hybrid since I've had it, I've not killed it, and I figured I would make a care video. When I was looking into getting this plant, I really struggled to find information on it. The pure form, the Darth Vaderina, was discovered in Borneo in 2013. Currently it's 2024 and I just figured that even though it was a hybrid there would just be more information. It seems that one of the largest problems that people have with this plant is simply keeping it alive. There's leaf melting and several other things and the price of the plants, the pure form like the pure Darth Vader arenas are ridiculously expensive. So why or how did I get to a point where mine's not dead? So I started out with several different terrarium begonias and whenever I was able to keep those alive for like three or four months, that's when I purchased this one. So I purchased mine from Etsy and I purchased it in December. It is currently at the end of March and I'll just tell you kind of simply how I've kept mine alive. So the first thing that you have got to have if you want to keep one of these is some kind of an enclosure. You're going to need upwards 75% or higher in humidity and in having really high humidity you need to avoid having water on the leaves. So if you are going to have an enclosure such as the one behind me you need to have a canopy or the misters not directly putting water on the leaves because water on the leaves will and may, may cause them to melt. Something else is, so you've got your enclosure, you've got to have that high humidity consistently. And if you have dips, you're going to have, it's like the outer perimeter of the leaves like dry up. So you're gonna to have to have a terrarium. The second thing is lighting. So I use these lights here and one of the reasons people love these begonias so much is because they have these very dark leaves, very gothic-esque. So many plants have green leaves and these are unique because they're a little different in that aspect. So if you expose it to too much light, the leaves will stay almost like red and that's what I, that's the only problem honestly that I've kind of had is that my leaves are red. However, my plant is growing and flourishing, so I'll be okay with the leaves being red. So lighting, you need to have lighting. And lighting's so difficult to describe. It's been a little bit easier with the rise of the artificial lights because you can have a light, let's say two or three feet away from your plant, and that is going to be something consistent. I, in this corner, only have that really funny looking uh, barina light that I stuck in concrete. That was pretty much the primary source of light whenever I had it there for the past three months. And now it's on my desk where it's gonna be receiving less light. And my experiment in moving it here and giving it like a halo terrarium light is to try to get that darkening back because right now I have a lot of redness in the leaves. And the leaves do start off red and then they're going to darken up. So lighting's important. I would like to suggest that you either have the smallest GE bulb or a Barina light, not the T5s. You might burn it depending on the distance. But yeah, the LEDs is what I used and I just kept it like two, two feet away from it and it seemed to do fine. You can also have a light pointing at a wall and like bouncing back. That seems to be fine. Um, but if you have a super strong light and like that pillar of light is directed in one point like a bullseye, I would, I would suggest not putting it there because you might burn the leaves. So that's with lighting. In terms of watering, you really don't want this plant to dry out. I have it in an enclosure. So what I do with these is I open, I get everybody set in, and then I leave the top on and I really don't bother them. So I really don't feel comfortable talking about watering because I don't. I pretty much put them in these enclosures and I leave them there. I don't water the terrarium simply because unlike this one that has a netted top, these are solid glass so they're not able to have any form of evaporation 
all the water that evaporates goes up and condensates and then drops back down into the enclosure. Also, if you want to have the best possible viewing, you want to keep the bottom layer like not with sitting water. I've tested mine with one of those humidity measurers and mine's a good amount of humidity without being too wet because sometimes what'll end up happening is if it's too moist, there's gonna be water sitting on the leaves. There's gonna be a layer of condensation around the glass and you're just not gonna be able to see it. And one of the most wonderful things about these plants is being able to look at them and display them. So that's something you can keep in mind if you are using a glass enclosure like I am doing. So watering, don't let these bad boys dry out. Also, like I said earlier, do not let the water sit on their leaves because they just don't like it. Another thing is the soil. So with some terrarium begonias, you can play with lime and that sort of stuff. I'm a big supporter of the KISS principle and I like to keep it simple because that's just, I think it makes planting and everything like that just a little bit more fun because some of these things do require that complication that all those little tiny details but I just try to simplify things for myself and for everyone else so they can have more success. So I've been using for my terrariums a mix that I kind of copied from someone else but not really because I use different things because my stores don't have the same products as maybe yours do. So I purchased the Better Grow Orchid Mix and it comes with perlite and charcoal. It comes with tree bark that's basically for orchids. Those are all the things orchids like. And I mix it with an organic soil and I place it on top of a barrier, basically a false bottom. And that's how things have worked. Things have worked really well with the enclosures that I've made. And that prevents the roots from being in contact with the water. They can, of course, grow through that false bottom, but those roots will be okay because they've always been exposed to water if water is there. So that's what I do. And the soil seems to work really well. And then if you do choose to fertilize these enclosures, you need to use something organic because if you use something synthetic, it's gonna burn the roots. So keep that in mind if you're planning on doing that. Something else that you can also have is, I haven't tested this, someone told me this, so I don't know if it's true or not, but if you over fertilize some of your um, plants, they can have, begonias are really interesting because lighting and fertilizer and minerals all of that impacts the way they look, I think, more so than some other plants. So you can over fertilize and run into the potential for having more red leaves. So that's something else to keep in mind. So the soil needs to be kind of airy. It needs to have stuff to where there's not like super compacted. It needs to have tiny little air pockets so there can be some oxygen into the roots. So I've talked about water. I've talked about lighting and I've talked about soil. So what are some other things that I've noticed with my hybrid? So one of the things is that I think with these plants that are kind of like more, I don't know, unique, I guess novel, I really like to just set something like this and forget it. Like impatience will kill your plants. Like if you're constantly fidgeting with them, if you don't give them a chance to just reacclimate and respond to the new conditions you've put them in, um, they're not gonna be able to rebound as quick, the more changes you submit them to. So I strongly encourage that if you get one, it's really tempting to just like show it to everybody and whatnot, but I would highly suggest you put it into like a container and show it off that way simply because you don't want it to get exposed to ambient air unless you're in a greenhouse or you have like um, some kind of an enclosure or you live in the super tropics, your ambient humidity is probably not gonna be what they, they need. So once you get one, get it out of the box and try to get it into an enclosure as quickly as you can because you want to limit um, the damage because the leaves will dry and crinkle and fall off. 
So I hope that this information was helpful and that you feel more informed in going forward if you choose to purchasing a Green Spot Darth Vaderina Hybrid. Thank you so much for watching. Be sure to like and subscribe and I'll be seeing you next time. Goodbye.